Another reaction video? Yes. Again, the moment I'm recording this, well, the moment this comes out, I am not at home. And I wasn't at home the day before the stream. So, I have something ready beforehand. So, I did have a try not to laugh ready for you guys, but it sucked because it was way too easy for one that calls itself world's hardest try not to laugh impossible. Yeah, it was one of the easiest ones. I've been getting into a lot of analog horror. Not recently, but lately. Like months ago, when Mandela Catalog started, I got into more analog horror stuff. So, I figured, why not to react to one that I haven't seen before? And before you guys ask, I've seen all the Mandela Catalog, Walton Files, Smile Tapes, Backrooms, The Other Review, uh, Gemini Home Entertainment, Local 58, even Man in the Suit. Seen them all. One I haven't seen is Greylock. I've never watched Greylock. But from what I heard, it's really good. So, in this video, we're going to watch the whole series. We're going to watch all 12 videos, even the long ones. So, get prepared. Will he earn my subscribe? Maybe. Primary systems online. Meeting sequence complete. Emergency shutdown protocols disengaged. Systems okay. offline for time code 0106. Contact technician for assistance. Welcome to. Oh, um, before we get any further. Go subscribe to the guy and uh, watch the rest of the Greylock before you watch this reaction. Yeah. What? These credentials are not recognized. Clearance credential requirement overridden. Administrator privileges granted. Welcome back. I'm your user ID. What would you like to do? I would like to play Access some video games. Storage form, GBS. The hell? Data. What did that say? Form, Hold on. Fatal error. Oh, whatever. It's just fatal error. That's what it says. Data extraction initiated. Data extraction. Ten percent complete. Data extraction, 4 complete. Stop it! Data extraction, 80% complete. 80? Yeah, that was a big jump. Complete. Oh, it's complete now. Okay. All data extracted to error. No believers, we remember so What? Ah, uh, to the mountains. The thing about analog horror is the suspense is what scares you. It's not exactly the jump scares, it's the suspense. That's what scares you the most. That's what gets you the chills. So this is tape two. Let me read to you, dear believer, the words of the late, brilliant Charles Spurgeon, who discussed this at length in a sermon all the way back in 1864. He 1864? Said, our adversary, the that could be important. Goes about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. We are taught by our Lord Jesus to pray. Do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. The hell is that? What is that just a tree that's... Or shun in prayer? We should equally pursue oh, it's a street light. <laughs> There's a light in a tree. <laughs> That's... I thought it was something important. Seeking to walk in the path of obedience 
so that we may never Every time I see a, a bright light, I think it's important. St just another fucking street we light. Not to enter the thicket in search of the lion. We may pay dear. Looks like someone's coming. Oh, uh, nope, never mind. I lied. We're here. That's some blood. Don't like. Hmm. You know, if I see blood on the ground, I don't go walking that direction. What are we looking at? Is it the stick in the. Why are you still following the blood trail? Oh my. Sticks. Ah, tree. Yeah. Is the tree alive? Well, trees are alive, but... Line of blood! Don't go that way! Oh, the, the tree is bleeding? The hell is that? Is that a DVD case or something? face to face with the devil himself whether we intended to or not dear believer we are drawn to dear believer. our own hearts in matthew chapter 15 verse 19 i didn't write it it says for out of the heart come evil thoughts murder adultery sexual immorality theft false witness slander there is a shadow mr deep Deep within our hearts, within our minds, in a place most people Nothing's don't even there. know exists within themselves. Keep these brights on. Maybe something will pop out. The devil is going to call to those depths, dear believer. And though you may travel, still don't see anything. Beast, I could be blind. Am I supposed to see something? You should on yourself and accept what it is that he bestows upon you. What the fuck? Actually, fucking spooked me. Hold on. Oh, don't like that, sir. You're speeding, sir. The speed limit. Follow the limit. That spooked me, man. The fucking banging on the door fucking got me. All right, let's get back into it. Name Alexander Michael Marsh. Okay, do we want to go to jail? And yes. Welcome to the preconditional protocols and orientation video system provided by Unit 13 as part of the United mm. States Army and Project Stargate, created in partnership with Symbiodyne USA. Simeo dies here at Unit 13. Congratulations on your selection as one of our testing candidates. You like I didn't agree. I was forced into this. this video is designed Just to kidding. answer them all. First, let's go over some background information to provide you with the crucial context you'll need for a full understanding of what it is we are doing at Unit 13. We are sure you've heard plenty of rumors surrounding what it is that we do, but we are willing to bet that most of the things you've heard is wrong. 
being a highly confidential part of Project Stargate, which you've already been briefed on. Unit 13 studies a revolutionary and promising area of parapsychology. Thought forms. If you're unfamiliar with what thought forms are, that's okay. You're in the majority. So, what Am are I? thought forms? Through the ages, occultists and spiritualists, Tibetan monks to theosophists, have exercised the creation of what is sometimes referred to as a tulpa, otherwise known as a thought form. A thought form is the manifestation of a person's will, emotion, or other deeply psychologically energized state into a semi-physical form, existing as not only an extension of the person, but as its own independent and sentient entity. Thought forms are also able to be witnessed and experienced by third parties, and are not limited solely to the person who developed them. Thought forms have been formed to serve as familiars, companions, or even friends to those who conjure them. Ah, oh, so they're like imaginary friends and all that? Hey, at least they ain't alternates. To key literature, thought forms can be intentionally formed by a single person or multiple people, though they can be unintentionally formed as well but they are always manifested through the deep will and focus of a person in a considerably heightened state of connectivity with their own consciousness. Traditional thought forms can vary widely in their level of influence in the real world. While they usually take physical formations eventually, their earliest stages are more apparitional in nature, with brief manifestations, though most often remaining as an unseen essence, much like a phantom or a ghost. At this phase, thought forms and ghosts are very similar okay. in a number of ways. Individuals can make contact with them through communication devices, such as a Ouija board or through EVP sessions, while the thought form- Is this why all those fucking white girls gather together to do a Ouija board fucking challenge? It's what JayStation did back in the day. You know that piece of shit creator? Yeah. Forms may respond through moving objects, manipulating electronics, or even speaking words in short phrases. Due to their striking similarities, a current theory established by Unit 13 suggests that what we know as ghosts may not be as common as we once believed. Rather than a deceased person's energy being left behind after death, it's possible, and indeed likely, that these paranormal entities are actually thought forms that are unintentionally created by those individuals that the deceased has left behind, who spend inordinate amounts of time in deeply emotional states, where their mental capacity is largely occupied by a powerful focus on the departed individual. In other words, as these are the ideal conditions from which thought forms are born, people may very well create their own ghosts and hauntings. However, as more time and energy is invested into the development of the thought form, they begin to harness more influence on their environment, until eventually okay. exhibiting a semi-permanent physical appearance, and, in due course, becoming as tangible as a living creature. This is where Unit 13's interest comes in. So they become real after question. a period of time. Can thought forms be created in a manner that would benefit American society and help keep American citizens safe. Unfortunately, the practice of intentionally creating a thought form by traditional methods would undoubtedly take years and years of devout mental training. So, Project Stargate has enlisted a world-renowned authority in thought forms, a man named Dr. Bernard Hayes, to oversee a number of the operations related to Unit 13's work. His participation has been invaluable and has brought fruitful results to the project. Due to Unit 13 and Simeodyne USA's combined efforts, bringing together some of the most prestigious minds in the world, specializing in the sciences of the human consciousness, with cutting-edge technology and engineering methods, we've created a groundbreaking, proprietary invention. Introducing the Thought Form Manifester. The Thought uh -huh. Form Manifester is able to create it's just an chair. and self-sustaining Thought Form entities from the minds of select, willing participants. Being that they come from the deepest recesses of the human mind, thought forms can appear in virtually any configuration. They can look like a person, an object, an animal, or even something as abstract as the physical representation of an emotion. That being said, it's recommended to brace yourself before touring the thought form chambers, as thought forms can also take on appearances that could be considered disturbing. I want to summon Homer Simpson! like a creature one might see in a childhood nightmare. There's no reason to be afraid, however. 
All thought forms are docile by nature, and while they may look or behave in a frightening manner, and though they are capable of making physical contact, they pose no threat to humans. Once your session oh, in the okay, thought form manifester is completed, your thought form will be securely transported directly into a containment chamber. Thought forms are unable to pass through the barrier of the Wait, but if they're... If they can't hurt us, why do we contain them? They will not be capable of causing you any issues. There are some very rare potential side effects that may result from your session. These side effects include increased tiredness, loss of balance, dizziness, insomnia, vomiting, episodes of temporary amnesia. The first four is me every day. And mild hallucinations. These side effects. Well, at least the first three. Will clear I'll have insomnia. Two hours of your session. Oh and well, maybe. Signs of your brain recalibrating <laughs> to the real world. It is recommended you refrain from driving or operating heavy machinery for 72 hours after your session, even if you experience no side effects. None of these side effects should cause you any harm or overt stress, and former testing candidates who have experienced these side effects reported that they were very mild and merely a transient inconvenience. With all of that out of the way, we are looking forward to your participation with Unit 13, and your time in the thought form manifester has been scheduled. However, there are several required mind exercises as a part of this video system that must be completed prior to your scheduled date in order to prime your consciousness and ensure the highest quality results. Please enter the video cassette labeled TF2, waking your subconscious. Oh, now, we're, we're gonna play Team Fortress? So that's same. perfect! Oh, I'm a whoop your ass! Unexpected visitors. What? Are you stalking someone? This isn't. Oh, oh, I saw it. Oh, I saw it. Okay. <laughs> it, it was it. No. Look, look at it. Just looking out. That's a person, ain't it? Look. Don't do that. Why are you creeping around the house, man? Someone in that window. I ain't get a good look. Are you getting on the fucking... I was just tripping up. What are you doing? A screen door. 
Are we breaking in? Opening things. The light is on. That door is open. What's this tape call again? Unexpected vid visitors, yeah. There's a random door up the stairs. What did you do? Thank my producer, my oh my, my god, writers, my director, director, my friends, and you, the ordinary PP people who made me what I am today. Next headroom premieres at the moon lighting tomorrow. They did love me. PBS emergency broadcast system program at the request of the Massachusetts State Police. This is the emergency broadcast system. This is not a test. All normal broadcasting has been discontinued during the emergency. This station will broadcast official information, news, and instruction for Northern Berkshire County, Massachusetts, after the following tone. Bro, aren't you listening to the broadcast system? Oh, 
What the fuck? Close your window. Holy shit. <laughs> Get the fuck out of <laughs> Oh my god. I learned it. <laughs> oh my god, next video. Well, hello again, Tiffany. Oh, hi, Wanda. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, too. No dad this time. No, unfortunately, he couldn't get off work today. So I'm gonna have to call him on a payphone to let him know all the details as soon as... This is one called? <laughs> not here, not now, not anymore. He's excited to be a dad, huh? Oh, yes, he uh, certainly is. We, we both can't wait to be parents. Aw, and you said you've been together since high school, right? Yep. That's so sweet. And have you decided on a name for your baby boy yet? Yep, we're going with Max. Ooh, Max, huh? Mm -hmm. That's a nice, strong name. <laughs> That's why my fiancé wanted it so bad. He says it'll help make him strong right off the bat. That's a pretty good way of thinking about it. So let's see how strong little Max is so you can hurry up and make that call. Yes, please. He's been moving around like crazy the past couple weeks. So I think he's really strong. Strong enough okay. to kick so hard I almost throw up sometimes, too. <laughs> Aw, what a wild boy. Activity is good. Yep. Yeah. Okay, hopefully this isn't too cold. No, it's okay. <sighs> What's going on? Doesn't have children? Oh. There he is. He's definitely a growing boy, that's for sure. And you're both looking really good. Oh. <laughs> Are he moving? I love hearing that. The hell? Uh. Let's get some measurements to see exactly, exactly how much he's grown. <gasps> what was that? I don't know. I've never seen that before. Maybe something to do with the power. Oh. Okay. You're right. Um, this is a bit strange. What? What's strange? Nothing to worry about or anything. Just having some trouble finding the baby all of a sudden. Maybe the machine messed up? Possibly. But I can still see everything else. It's just not picking up the baby for some reason. H have this ever happened before? Um, well, sometimes babies can move into certain positions that are hard to see. But, but... <laughs> But you can't see my baby at all? I'm looking. Don't worry. He, he's definitely here. Where the... You know what? Why don't we just see if we can borrow another machine, okay? There has to be something wrong with this one. I'll be right back. Um... Okay. What? <laughs> His name, uh, Tiffany Chris. I don't know. School teacher, important. I really jumped at that a little bit. Damn. Sleeping dogs.
Oh my god. Hold on. Frank Porter, please enter your credentials. Credential requirement bypassed by system administrator. Greetings, in no user ID. Welcome to Simeodyne USA's virtual message assistant for user. Project director, Frank Porter. Establishing custom telephone message settings. Sender, Paul Morelli, Ev. The Morelli Construction and Mining Company. Paul Morelli, Dates that's another name we might need to remember. March 24th, 1987, 2. March 30th, 1987. Beginning playback of your messages. Message 1. March 24th, 11.14 a.m. Hey Frank, it's Paul Morelli. We ran into somewhat of an issue today. We also we know the name of Frank. inside the mountain. Pretty deep in, but uh... Well, this is gonna sound a little crazy, but he told me to call if anything strange came up, and uh, I figured this qualifies. People have been here before. Some obviously man-made shit in there, like carvings and stone. This shit looks ancient, like real old. I took a crew in to look through it, but since part of the tunnels caved in some time ago, we're gonna just have to bust through it regardless. But I still wanted to make you aware of it. Anyways, I'll keep you moving. Thanks. Message 2. March 25th, 7.38 a.m. Hey, Frank, it's Paul. Just calling to tell you the day might be a bit slower than usual. All right. Unfortunately, a number of the crew are sick as dogs. Not, uh, not really sure what kind of stomach bugs going around or what, but we'll do our best to pick up slack. I'm calling in some guys who have a day off, so uh, hopefully things will get a little closer to normal, you know? That being said... Come on, let me I, read I what he's saying. Happened, Possession of a tunnel here caved in is clear. Tunnel's been wired up with a few lights too. Wanted to see if maybe you sent someone in while we were off. Why does every scary thing take place in 1987? Shift. Sure. Night crew said you didn't, but you know I didn't see anybody else either. So, but a few of the guys said they seen something running around in the woods surrounding the site. I figured it's probably a deer or whatever, but. Seeing all the ruckus we're making out here, you know? But they all insisted it was something else. Something like a, a real tall man. Might just be some environmentalist moron trying to cause some shit, but, you know, he ain't done nothing, Probably so is. Don't keep focus on the project. For safety's sake, we're gonna avoid the tunnel until I hear back from you. Alright, bye now. Message 3. March 25th, 4.56 p.m. Hey, Frank, it's Paul again. The guy you sent out to take photos just left, but, uh, well, he seemed totally fine when he got here, but we practically had to carry him back to his car when it was done. I don't know if he caught whatever's going around, but figured you should know. Also, we found some really old shit down there, Frank. Now, I ain't no historian, but we got a guy on the crew who used to do archaeology work or whatever, and I don't know. But I guess there's some old artifacts down there, like weapons and trinkets and whatever. I'll have him draft up a report for you and send it your way, because I feel like he'd be interested, and he can explain all this shit better than I could anyways. His name's Arnold Rivers. That's about it. Arnold right. Rivers. Bye. Message Got 4. It. March 26th, 1.03 p.m. There's message 7 that says there's an error right. with the time and date. That might be... Something ain't right here. Crew's getting worse, more sick. I, I feel okay so far, but I, I don't know how long that's going to last. <sighs> I saw that thing the guys have been talking about last night, stalking around in the tree line. I swear it had a face. <sighs> anyways, just, just call me back as soon as you can, Frank. 
Message oh, look, 12. message 7, it, there's an error. 7, 12, That's going to be a key part. Oh, and same with uh, 9. Rod, don't spoil them covered in maggots. It's perfectly fine and stored. There wasn't any problems with the generator, even if we lost power. I mean, it's the end of March. All our food looks like it's been left out in the heat for weeks. No idea what's going on. Please call me back. Why Message haven't you six. called him back, March Frank, you dick? Hey, it's Paul. We saw it again. Something out here with us. It's in the woods. And it's... It's watching us, goddammit. It ain't no animal either. Who are you guys gonna put up those fancy hunting cameras and see if we can catch anything? Maybe locals fucking with us? I don't know. We'll figure it out. But yeah, anyways, I, I just... Motion detected. Message 7. Date and time unavailable. Message Yeah, this, this could be important. I don't see anything. I must be blind because people. Oh, I see things. Message 8. March 29th, 10 13 p.m. Frank? Oh? It's Paul. Holy shit. Uh, well, a lot of the crew here is sick now and they're sort of like and unresponsive. We tried emergency contacts for them, but they didn't know they just keep ringing. The phones, they just, they just kept ringing and ringing and ringing. Nobody picked up from any number we tried. Nobody picked up. No answer machines either. Mama weren't supposed to pick up, though. They're supposed thing. to. Just ringing. Just tried 911. Still nothing. I They're supposed to pick up. They're not... The machine actually picked up. <laughs> I think I caught whatever's going around. My skin, it feels, feels tight. A lot of pressure behind my eyes. My, my teeth oh, feel like they're humming, vibrating. You know what? I just all started when we came across that tunnel. I feel like it, I need to figure out what's down there. Oh. No. Whatever's down there could help my crew. But most no. Of all, I feel like something really bad's gonna happen if I don't go down. So I'm going down tonight. No. Something really bad's gonna go down if you go down there. Motion detected. What is it? This is some type of predator bullshit. Message nine. March 20th. Time unavailable. Speak to me. Paul. Paul, what happened to you? This is the end. I do messages. Okay. Good job, Frank. You got Paul killed. I blame Frank for all this. Oh, my.
authorities continue to investigate the crime wave that swept across northern Berkshire County. Done right. Many of its residents in a state of anxiety and panic. It was two weeks ago when the emergency broadcast system was engaged to warn residents to secure their homes due to the activity of a group of individuals who had been targeting and breaking into people's homes. Authorities have since confirmed that the attacks were, in fact, part of an organized criminal effort and have been attributed to a local anti-American militia group operating out of western Massachusetts called... Police have made numerous arrests in connection to... ...militia, and officials continue to release statements to assure the public that they are safe once again. We've seen a lot of credible information over the past couple weeks, and the investigation is still ongoing. We'll get a closer report by the day. Thankfully, due to the continued efforts of law enforcement, life has been able to return back to normal. Back, back to normal. To no back to normal. Yeah. To normal. To normal. Doesn't to look normal. like it's gonna be back to normal. Yeah, I had to say something. What the fuck? Back to normal for residents of Berkshire County. Liar. Odd, odd ends. Well, that broadcast went completely tits up, didn't it? I've been getting chewed out by our asshole CIA. Oh, this video is 17 minutes long. What the fuck happened? Looking into it, sir, but we experienced new issues with the broadcast in our end, so I'm here. Hold on, we're going to. I'm going to go get something to drink. Water and also some Doritos. Cool ranch flavored. I was got nacho cheese somewhere behind me. So let's get back into it. Well, that broadcast went completely tits up, didn't it? I've been getting chewed out by our asshole CIA liaison for the past two hours. What the fuck happened? I'm looking into it, sir, but we experienced new issues with the broadcast in our end, so our engineers believe that the signal was hijacked before even reaching the transmitter, but once we started receiving phone calls from viewers, we switched to a backup transmitter. But by then, the hijacker had already said everything they wanted to say, hadn't they? Mm, yes, sir. What a complete... Fuck up! They made us look like a fucking joke! And sure, our most popular show. Speaking of which, Don, where the fuck is he? I can't get hold of him, and he needs to get in here and read a statement to help clean up this fucking mess. Uh, well, we've been trying to reach him. We've called him multiple times. We've tried his pager. We've asked around to see if anyone's heard from him, but nothing. Right now we've got Gerald standing in for him tonight. Have you been to his house? Uh, well, no, I just thought that maybe he'd, he'd be upset if I did that. Get in your fucking car and go to his fucking house! I don't care if you kick down his front door and drag him here by his ear! You bring him into the studio! Do you understand? Alan Rosenbaum, Samantha Renrich, Liam Hollander. There's some real powerful people depending on us right now. They need us to manage the response to these events to let the public know what's going on, and the last thing we need is it going wider than it already fucking has. So do what you need to do, or I'm gonna replace you with some producers who actually know how to produce a fucking show. Sorry, the file you are trying to access has been destroyed and can no longer be executed or retrieved. Please choose another file. Oh. Sorry, sorry, it's all true my file and the trying to destroy my trying. Sorry, oh, this per- Warning, anomalous file detected. This file should not exist. Are you sure you wish to proceed? Yes. Opening file. Arnold Lieberberg's personal log. Final. My name is Arnold Eugene Rivers. The date is April 8th, 1987. About a quarter past nine at night. 1987. I was involved in the Morelli. Something wrong with Morelli that year. I was hired due to my background in anthropology and archaeology. I've worked to excavate a number of different historical sites. Paul Morelli took me on after securing a government contract for the Greylock Project. I told you that name was important. I'm recording this because I believe my life is in danger, and I likely don't have a lot of time left. 
so I need to leave some kind of record of my findings. On March 24th, our crew came across tunnels in the mountain that have a multitude of ancient markings and artifacts. On March 25th, Paul cleared the interior of the mountain and asked me, accompanied by a small crew, to look through the tunnels and record notes on what I was able to recognize. I was then to report to one of the project directors, named Frank Porter, mm. to offer my perspective on our... F this is the guy they had brought in, like, midway through. At the time, but what we discovered in that mountain was not normal. Not only did I see the impact it was having on the crew, but certain aspects of my findings did not make any sense. Many of the other facts were pre-colonial. Some were from Native American tribes, but there were other artifacts. Some were still American, and others were shockingly Clovis in nature. Finding Clovis artifacts here means that people have been coming to Mount Greylock since at least 11,000 BCE. But that's not all, no. There are artifacts I found that could potentially be from even earlier. Paleo-American cultures that we have yet to even begin studying. Then, there were artifacts and writings left by the cultures that were pre-Columbian in nature. Transoceanic oh. contacts prior to Columbus reaching the Americas has always been largely a theory, but, but the artifacts in this mountain, they, they prove it. Ancient Who Chinese, Arabic, Indian, Roman, Spanish, Viking... Even ancient Greek and Egyptian are finding that they alone would change world history as we know it today. I'll admit, the anthropologist in me was thrilled. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I figured it had to be a hoax, but I'm confident that it's all authentic. But my excitement was soon replaced with a looming fear and anxiety. How could such a place be so important to so many cultures for so long? There must be something immense here. Whatever it was. was. Well, that's why I left the project. The tunnels all connected to a series of chambers deep into the interior of the mountain. That's where the majority of the relics were found. There were old baskets of herbs and spices, pottery, weapons and armor, talents. Did you take some of those weapons? Other religious items, countless other things. But all of it was there purposely as offerings. Offering? Cosmic Mysteries! Grav TV 13, TBN News, Don Wright tonight. It was billions of years ago, when our planet was still mostly fire and rock, that a Mars-sized planet that had been drifting through our solar system collided directly with the Earth. The impact was so powerful and violent that the rogue planet was blown into countless pieces of debris. This debris collected to form our moon. Many of the pieces of the unknown planet remain inside the Earth to this day. Police Department, Dispatcher Carey speaking. Um, yes, I'm calling to report a break-in at my co-worker's house. What is your name, sir? My name is Liam Hollander. Okay, oh. Liam, you said this was your co-worker's house. What is your co-worker's address? Ah, uh, it's on uh, Parker, Parker Hill Road in Adams. Uh, oh, Don Wright's not all right. 491 Parker Hill Road, is that right? Yes. Okay, can you tell me, is anybody hurt? I don't know. Liam, are you still with me? Yes, sorry. Is anybody hurt? Yes. Oh. Oh my god. Then I witnessed many altars constructed. They killed Don Wright. Along with evidence of mass animal and human sacrifice. And the carvings in the walls of these sacrificial chambers. I couldn't recognize a single familiar symbol, and it, it made me sick to even look at them. Let me be clear, I am not, nor have I ever been, a religious man, but there's something in that mountain, S something people of countless cultures over the history of our planet have been worshipping 
But I don't know why. But I can feel it. Whatever's down there, I can feel it. It was like being trapped in a fever dream. I swear I could hear a voice and even felt compelled to go further. To speak to whatever's down there. I don't know. I don't know. I, I haven't been right since I, I keep hearing this droning in my head. Ceaseless all day and night. I, I can't sleep. Just droning. Just go to sleep, man. Always droning. But, but that, that doesn't matter right now. I informed Mr. Porter in my report that the archaeological findings in the mountain are of monumental historical importance and that there is certainly more to be discovered. And I recommended discontinuing construction there. But it's not as though I have any authority over this project. I fully expected to be ignored. Mr. Porter called me on the evening of March 28th and we spoke on the phone briefly. It was as I thought. He disregarded my concerns. I informed him that I wasn't going to return to the Frank, site. Dude. He insisted I did. Said I was a valuable asset to the project. Even offered me a substantial raise. And wanted me to lead a specifically organized team that would clear the tunnels of artifacts before excavation would continue. I, quote unquote, could be responsible for the biggest historical finding of all time, he said. I refuse again. I won't put a price on my sanity or my health, especially after seeing what was happening to the crew. Now loading. Morali Greylock event. Group C. Survivor data. Profile for patient B3590. Rockford, Thomas. Al formations. Notes. Communicative. Thomas Rockford. Patient Rockford, Thomas. Spontaneous violent Thomas outbursts. Rockford, I'm going for. Treatment All right, Thomas. Of heavy sedation recommended. Only communicate while patient is restrained or via intercom. And 1997. Loading. Profile for patient. B9231. Washington. Samuel, Samuel. Washington. Al formations. Oh! Notes. Communicative. Patient suffers from constant state of severe paranoia and delusions, resulting in unpredictable violent outbursts. Standard treatment ineffective. High dose xylazine is recommended. Only communicate while patient is restrained or via intercom. Now loading. Profile for patient. B6670. No. Herrera, Ramon. Now formations. Uh. Notes. Uncommunicative. Patient appears to be in catatonic state. Warning, patient may sit up very suddenly, without provocation, to projectile vomit at any staff in area. Patient's vomit is extremely corrosive and emits nerve gas. All treatments ineffective. Studies must be conducted with full anti-corrosive gear and air purifying respirator equipped on all staff involved. Now loading. Profile for no patient. No more! B8816. Poor Fleming, Charles, what Charles. happened to him? Malformations. Notes. Oh my god, he's a zombie. Warning, patient will attack on sight. Do not interact. Immunity to pain. Patient exhibits cannibalistic tendencies. All treatments ineffective. Immediate euthanasia recommended. Now loading. Profile for patient. B4041. No, stop testing people! Cursed, Scott. Malformations. Jesus. Notes. Communicative. Communicate with caution. Warning. Got that red eye. pretends to be benevolent and friendly. Strong homicidal and cannibalistic tendencies. Killed and partially consumed six staff members on April 6, 87. Patient laughed hysterically during the attack. All treatments ineffective. Immediate euthanasia or permanent restraint for further study recommended. Now loading. Profile for patient. B7992. Kowalski, Edward. Right, Edward. Now formations. Oh my god. Notes. Communicative. Hazardous. Warning, patient possesses inhuman power of suggestion and influence over others. Do not interact. All treatments ineffective. Immediate euthanasia recommended. Now loading. Profile for patient. Stop! Not Rafi, the mustache John. guy! Now formations. 
moods. Uncommunicative. Hazardous. Patient appears to be deceased. No vital signs. Patient's body not decomposing. Warning, staff have become ill after even brief time spent in patient's room. Illness disregards protective suiting. Immediate quarantine required for all victims. Mortality rate post-exposure currently 92%. Survivors subject to rapid physical and mental malformations. All treatments ineffective. Immediate remote euthanasia recommended. I consider myself incredibly lucky to not be in that condition right now. Oddly, he quickly accepted my second refusal, wished me luck in my future endeavors, but before I could say anything else, he hung up. But it seemed I'd made the right choice. I heard something she did. You got out of it. up at Mount Greylock, and then simultaneously, there were all of these things that have been happening around the mountain. The home invasions, the dead bodies that fell from the sky over Cheshire, the pregnancy oh, phenomena, fell from the sky. Ah. so many other unexplainable things. They all must be related. And I've been trying to figure out how. I've connected with a local investigator who's been trying to get to the bottom of this. I've shared with him everything I have, though I feel that I've been being watched. I feel a looming threat that I can't really explain. Would the government really send someone to kill me over this? I feel like I'm paranoid. Like I've lost some of my mind. But I came home from the grocery store the other day and my front door was unlocked. And I know I had locked it before I left. I scanned my entire house for traces of anything, but found nothing out of the ordinary. I even checked and replaced all of the light bulbs. <laughs> Saying it out loud like this, it makes me realize how crazy I sound. I've always been a rational man. There's a logical explanation behind everything. Well, I'm glad that I put all of this into a recording. Perhaps that was what I needed to snap me out of this. Honestly, I feel much better just talking about it. Come out the window. They're here. I'm inside my bedroom closet. I'm going to keep the tape recorder running, and I'm hiding in here with my files. Don't if talk. To me and you'll find any tapes or files somehow. Please bring it to the investigator, Jim Melgram North Adams. That goes for this video footage as well. Getting closer. Shut the fuck up. Come on out, it's the police. <laughs>
Accessing Trojan GDS technology. One oh one WRAV FM radio station. Date of broadcast December 13, 1963. Segment announcement of the National Access Initiative. Beginning playback. In one of his first acts after his historic succession, President Lyndon B. Johnson's administration has announced an upcoming program that will revolutionize communication and bring critical home electronics into every American household. The National Access Initiative, as it's been named, is a program designed to ensure that all citizens have equal access to vital communication tools and ways to stay informed, fostering connectivity, security, and unity across the nation. Under this groundbreaking initiative, eligible American households will receive packages containing a myriad of electronics so that citizens may stay properly engaged with one another and remain knowledgeable regarding important events. The electronics such as telephones, televisions, and radios. These packages will also include items aimed at keeping families safe with devices such as smoke alarms, burglar alarms, and even flashlights. These things All will right. empower individuals to not only stay involved in their communities, but to remain prepared for any emergency as well. President Johnson himself was quoted as saying that in this era of progress and innovation, it is crucial for every American to have the tools necessary as they navigate the challenges of modern life. The recording. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> in an era of ever-increasing technological dependence. These electronics packages are being made available to American households through a partnership with world-renowned technology manufacturer, Simeodyne USA. Fine, Simeodyne! The technology giant's expertise in creating cutting-edge revolutionary technologies over the past decades has made them a household I name. believe in Joe and Hendry, not Simeon Dye. initiative ensures that the devices provided will be of the highest quality. Oh, really? Further enhancing the experience and benefit. That person or thing? Further enhancing the experience and benefits human. for American citizens. When asked for a quote during a press conference earlier this week, President of Simeodyne USA, Percival C. Rothwell, had a lot to say. The National Access Initiative represents a milestone in our nation's journey towards progress and inclusivity. It's a reflection of the American government and Simeodyne USA's unwavering commitment to empower every American citizen, regardless of age, location, or income, with the tools and resources needed to thrive in the electronic age. Yeah. I'm aware. Two percent of American households still don't have a television in the house. This means they are less informed and are unable to respond. If you watch Mandela Catalog, that that probably would be for the best. But this isn't Mandela Catalog. This is great. Emergencies as quickly or efficiently. A much greater percentage of households have no smoke alarms to alert them in the event of a fire. Perhaps most That's probably shocking change. of all, 29% of Americans don't even have a telephone in their home, meaning they're unable to call for aid or even just contact friends or family members. They are left disconnected. That's a person. For decades, people of all kinds have wondered what it is we're working on at any given time inside Simeodyne. And for decades, we've kept it all... You're working on zombies. 
but I'll let you in on a little something. Out here. Kennedy didn't go for it. But you assured me he was amenable. Or was that just more of your bullshit? That he's gonna fucking expose our whole plan for the NAI program. The meeting couldn't have gone worse. If that fucking Nick thinks he's gonna expose Simeon, he's got another thing coming. But we're not the only ones he's pissed off lately. After rejecting Operation Northwoods, and then that executive order involving the Federal Reserve, there are a lot of snakes in the grass. And it's about time that Kennedy got bit. At Simeon USA, we're building the future. No, you're not. And as the great, great grandson of our company's founder and its current president, I'll tell you one irrefutable fact, the most important one. All roads lead to connectivity. It says you. Without connectivity, we have no future. The more isolated individuals are from one another, the weaker they are. The more easily defeated they are and the less likely they are to see the value of their own lives. Hey, Hunter, have you seen the card uh -oh. Humanity has stood many times at the precipice of extinction. And the only reason we are still here today is because we stood there together. Simeon USA is here with you every step of the way. NIA, the NAI program was a trap. They are watching, they are listening. Fuck LBJ. Fuck Simeon. I won't be your lab rat anymore. Okay. Good on you. Good on you. We make a promise to continue to support you into the future as well. Whether it's from a lack of infrastructure or a lack of income, no one should be restricted access to potentially life-saving and life-enhancing technology. And this, this is only the beginning. We have so much more planned so that Americans can all truly be equal in our society. Really? Security. Connectivity, accessibility. It is our belief that it is these three factors that make America the best country in the world. Shadow. I don't like that. No, no, no. I like how that caused doors opening. Oh my god. Stop that. Mr. Rothwell also stated that these Who's monumental that? benefits won't only be Fucking Mr. Cult. Rothwell also stated that these monumental benefits won't only be made available to American households, but to police and fire departments, schools, and to small businesses as well. The Johnson administration has stated that while they are going to begin launching this landmark program right away, it will first be made available only in select areas as construction crews from coast to coast prepare to establish important infrastructure that will support the National Access Initiative program. Really? What in the fuck? What in the fuck, man? Don't you come closer! I have deodorant, I'll, I'll hit you with it. You come close. I'm offering you, Katie. Oh, there you are. Who, who 
office place that I had to go to? I think you might be right, Katie. I can't find I like that. So I can't really see you. Oh, Leave the kid alone! They're over here. Hmm. How did you get there? I noticed they were a little dirty. So I wanted to clean them for you. Why do I? Yes, they look all shiny and new now. Here, come get them. Then no! You'll be able to Away from the child. Away from the child. Child? Where are they? I still can't really see because my eyes are so bad. You reach out and I'll put them into your hand. Okay. Okay. The Johnson administration went on to say that their current projections for a nationwide release are for some time between mid-1966 and early 1967. Citizens will be mailed informational packets regarding the National Access Initiative, including information on how to apply as the program becomes available in our area. You've reached Alex Marsh and Tiffany Crisaldi. We're not able to get to the phone, so please leave a message after the tone and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. This is a 20 minute. Get more water. <laughs> That's more. What is this one called? Messages from the Dead. Closer. The rat. I know that club. Why'd you pick it up?
Don't pick up rodents, people. Hey, babe. I'm just checking in. Could you please give me a call as soon as you can? Don't worry about work, either. Please. You're way more important, okay? <laughs> okay. I love you. Bye. So, um, after we lost the baby, um, I stayed home for almost a month. We both took a heart, but I was just really worried about Tiffany. She seemed to be name. getting worse at this time. She spent a lot of time by herself. When it came time for me to return to work, we decided I would call home every day during my lunch break just so we could talk and check in on each other. She always picked up the phone whenever I called. She knew it would worry me sick if she didn't pick up the phone. I'm not sure what's going on, but I'm gonna head home. I'm sorry, I'm just... I'm kind of freaking out. I'll be there soon. I love you. For you. Dr. Heinrich Albrecht, medical examiner, Westfield. May 19th. 1987 3 23 p.m. On May 19th, come on! Oh, yeah, she died. Should be true. 
treated with utmost priority due to its unusual and unnerving nature. Okay, right. Tiffany, we're recording now. Okay. So, Tiffany, you just had your sixth birthday, didn't you? Yeah. Did you have a party? Yeah. How was it? Good. That's good. You're awfully quiet today. Are you seeing them again? Yes. Can you see them right now? Yes. Where are was they? Was this her when she was a child or something? Where are they, Tiffany? There. <laughs> Everywhere. Private lock for case file 87-091-HA for my home archives. The date is May 19, 1987. Time is 8.03 p.m. Incorrect. It is July 22nd when I'm recording this. Actually, it's going to come out like a whole week later. It's 9.52. What? Okay. Nah. Are you ready, Tiffany? I think so. Are you nervous? Yeah. Okay. I'll need you to follow my instructions, okay, Tiffany? As long as you do that, everything will be fine. Can you do that for me? Okay. Good. I'm going to play some sounds that will help you through this exercise. Close your eyes and keep them closed until I tell you to open them. I want you to picture yourself standing outside your house in your front yard. Okay. Oh. It's a beautiful day out with big fluffy clouds and a blue sky. No one else is around. Now look down at the grass around you and watch how each blade moves in a gentle breeze. Now look forward and see your house. And look around and see the trees around your yard. Watch how the breeze affects the leaves as it passes through. Make the wind blow a little harder, enough so the branches are swaying a little bit. You can this is hear nice. the rustling of the leaves around you. The wind calms down now, and you begin walking very slowly towards the front door of your house. Okay. Step. 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 
And with each step you take, it looks like the day is getting later and later. Soon the golden rays of the sun will shine Burles. against your house. The front door is closer now, but you still have some more steps to go. Step. 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 And now you're only three steps from the door. Step. Three. The sun vanishes behind the trees, going down. Step. The stars begin twinkling in the sky above, and the moon shines its soft glow over everything around you. Step. You arrive at the front door. Reach out your hand, turn the doorknob, and open the door. I don't even know what I'm Your house looks like it always does at night time, except you're the only one here now. You take off your shoes. First the right shoe. Okay, I'm not gonna do it anymore. Then the left shoe. Left shoe, got it. Do it with the we should have started with the left shoe. Feet. You can smell the familiar aroma of your house. Everything is in its proper place. You are alone. Got it. Alone. You're going to walk quietly to your bedroom now. You come to the stairs and begin to walk up. You hold on to the banister as you go, letting your hands slide up. Step. 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 You reach the second floor hallway. Everything is in its place. Oh, is there only four place. stairs? You are alone. Nobody else is here with you. You look to the right and you can see your bedroom door closed at the end of the hall. And you start walking nice and calmly towards it. You see nice and calmly, remember this. Each step. You can see the pink flower stickers that you put on it two years ago. And the small wooden sign that reads Tiffany with the little blue bird in the corner. Step. 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 You're at your bedroom door now. You reach out your hand and grasp the doorknob and turn it. The door opens, and you can see that your room looks just like it did the last you saw it. You see the colorful quilt on your bed. You see your small white dresser with all the stickers and scuff marks, just like always. Your stuffed animals are all resting by your purple toy box. You feel comfortable. You feel safe. You are alone. You walk into a room, and that's when you can see something different that's never been there before. Tell oh, now, don't do that. See. It's... It's a door next to my window. That's right. It's a door. What does the door look like, Tiffany? It, it looks black. It has weird marks on it. The wood looks weird. Walk to the door and open it. No, I'm man! Scared. It doesn't matter if you're scared. You must open the door. No! Good job, Tiffany. Now tell me what's on the other side of the door. It's a small room. Somebody's in there. No, Tiffany, you're alone. No, no, there's someone here, he's facing away from me, he's standing, and tall, he's very tall. Tiffany, you are alone, nobody else is there, now tell me oh. what else is in the room. There's a TV, the screen is all fuzzy, and the tall man is watching it. Tiffany. I want you to focus on removing the man from your mind. When I snap my fingers, he will be gone. 
you will be alone. The man's shaking. His uh -oh. body is cracking. It didn't okay, work. Tiffany, I'm going to count down from five. When I snap my fingers, you will return to the real world. Five. You're feeling more awake He's now. turning around. Four. Everything around you is becoming He's amazing. looking at me. He sees me. Three, Tiffany. You can feel the chair you're sitting in again. Two. Everything around you fades to the blackness behind you. One. Full control of your body. Zero. We're awake, Tiffany. You will return to reality now. Oh, shit. I don't think it worked. Why are we looking at the dead rat? Stop it. Oh my god, it's taxidermy now. What, are you gonna cut the tail off? Oh, the head. Oh, we're just gonna dissect it. Let's see what you're trying to do. We're dissecting rats now. Oh, it's a fake rat. Gun digest. <laughs> Got four copies of gun digest. Are you gonna ever Okay. Melgrin. I'm gonna happen. Oh. Motherfucker. I see you! I just show a fucking pocket knife on fucking camera. I am so sorry. Oh, this is a two minuter. Pre 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 preparations for a guest. There we go. I couldn't read for a second there. We're almost done. Next video is the video after this is gonna be the last one. I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't like it. Yeah, close it. Why other candles? I ask.
I don't like that. working what's gonna happen I don't like it all right the final part waking your subconscious at least the final part for now, as it is the last part on the on the thing. You are now prepared to see new shadows in your home. I don't want to see shadows in my home. So. Mm. Ah. Ah, oh, music. Finally. I don't have either. <laughs> Greetings. And welcome dying. to the Fuck second video you. program in the preconditional protocols and orientation video system for Unit 13. TF. What is it with the years 1987 and 1993? It's all because of Friday's Fridays, ain't it? Two, waking your subconscious. This video cassette has been specially designed to utilize powerful psychological exercises, along with cutting edge technology and your own brain's neuroplasticity, to allow Unit 13 to access the deepest energy potential of your incredible mind. This will be required to increase the likelihood of prime form cognogenesis. Before we begin, let's go over the required checklist to be sure you have everything in order, so that we won't end up with any negative or unexpected outcomes from this program. First on the checklist, ensure that you are alone, and will not be disturbed, for the entire duration of this program. It's critical that you do not become distracted, as working with the brain in such a way is a very delicate process. Second, turn off all light sources, except for your television or monitor that you are using for this program. This aids tremendously in your brain's ability to focus, but it also can make you feel vulnerable or frightened, hmm. which are beneficial to this program achieving the desired results. Ideally, you would wait until nightfall to complete this part of the program. Third, ensure that your volume is turned up to a level where no outside or ambient noise is able to leak through your headset. This too, helps with focus, but it also aids in those feelings Got of fear, it. and vulnerability, which are where our deepest and most complex solves are rooted. Fourth, have your workbook open to the TF2 section and have your writing utensil nearby, as some exercises will require you to write. However, hey, I'm picking if heavy, that's all I'm saying. Have your workbook. Simply grab a regular notebook or some sheets of paper, and write your name and TF2 at the top of each sheet you use. You will need to hand those into your program liaison, and they will take care of transferring the data from there. Once all of these conditions have been met, you're ready to continue to the next part. Now is the time to make sure that your Neurovisor headset is correctly equipped and connected. If you need any assistance, or are looking for more information regarding the Neurovisor, be sure to check the section titled Equipment and Connection in your Unit 13 Program Handbook. This will be your final opportunity to pause playback for the rest of this tape. Pausing after this point will cause a disruption, which could carve the night you fucking skull interrupt the data being collected by your headset. Your screen is about to gradually turn red. Once it is completely red, the program has officially begun, and the point of no return has been crossed. You have 10 seconds. Please, can we reverse? Damn it.
induction. Unlock the gateway to deeper corridors. For a sensitivity warning. Our first section induction contains bright flickering. If you have a photosensitivity disorder, it is best that you do not look at your screen. Close or shield your eyes, and just listen. Once the tone in your headset changes, it will be safe to look at your screen again. Induction will begin in five right. seconds. You guys know what to do, right? If you have epilepsy, turn around. Beginning induction. Please stare at your screen for 30 seconds. Got it. Oh my god. Is this supposed to work in the in the real world? Induction complete. Oh man. Section 2. Priming. Preparing your mind for enhanced Neural haptic realignment. This exercise will present you with five separate sets of words. Each set will contain six words. For each set, you will have ten seconds to choose the one word out of the six that you feel doesn't fit with the others, and write it down in your workbook or on an appropriately labeled piece of paper. If you do not have your workbook, simply write the numbers one through five vertically on your paper and place your answers beside each corresponding number. Now, let's begin. All right. Set one. Chair, table, couch, rope, bed. Rope. Rope, right? Oh, wow. Pen don't work. Blood. All right. My God. Visible. Yeah, you stop it now. Improved. Oh, wait, who's that? <laughs> I said, ah, you bitch. You. Priming complete. Perfect. Hi. Huh? Conditioning. That's in the way that you perceive in response to certain stimuli. This next section is a specialized variation of the Stroop test, which will measure multiple facets of your reaction to congruent and incongruent stimuli, while also examining how you deal with high stress, high anxiety situations. You will be shown a series of faces with emotional expressions, and the word for each emotion written on each face. The word could match the expression, like the word happy on a smiling face, or they might not match, like the word angry appearing on a sad face. You are about to begin the first testing phase of this section. This will be the easiest phase, with each subsequent phase becoming more and more difficult. Look directly at your screen and state your responses out loud. Phase 1 testing begins in 5 seconds. Three, two, one. Please state the word. Uh, neutral. Happy. Sad. Angry. Scared. Neutral.
written on each face and disregard the expression. Sad. Happy. Neutral. Scared. Happy. Scared. State the expression shown on each face, but disregard the word. Angry. Happy. Neutral. Scared. Contorted. Neutral. <laughs> Please state the expression shown on each face and disregard the word. Uh, happy, neutral, uh, uh, happy, neutral, angry, neutral, sad, happy, scared, uh, what, hey, 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 this isn't fair, change, oh dearie me, Never died. Oh my. Alert. Door one. Kennels open. What? What happened to the dogs? Did you kill the dogs? Ring, ring. Hello? Uh, yes, hello. This is Troy with Evervigil Security. Am I speaking with Charlotte Melgren? All right, we're a quarter uh, done. Uh, uh, yeah, yes. What happened this time? Uh, Ms. Melgren, we've detected some unusual activity at Forever Friends Kennels. Our system alerted us that kennel door one was open and then closed unexpectedly, followed by a power outage. Is it correct that your primary residence is the first unit at Forever Friends? Uh, yeah. Yeah, but... Okay, okay, so I'm not the one who got the security system. It was my dad. So I don't know if there's some way to fix this or whatever, but you guys have called me in the middle of the night, like, five times in the past couple of weeks, and it's all turned out to be false alarms. Every time. I, I'm so sorry about that, ma'am. I, I, I can take a look into why that might be happening if you'd like, uh, but first, I need to be sure that you're in a safe situation. Are you currently alone? Yeah, it's just me. But I, I'm looking out the window right now, and everything seems fine. I mean, the power's out, but it literally goes out all the time over there, so I'm just going to go flip the breaker. Uh, Ms. Morgan, we strongly advise against going outside or into the kennels, especially with the power outage. We can call out a police officer dispatch and they can make wait, sure it's wait, wait, safe wait, wait, before you... Wait, hold on. Is, is there any way we don't have to do that? I have to be up at 6 and the last time it took them over an hour to get here. For nothing. Please. Ma'am. Like I said, this has happened a ton of times and plus the dogs aren't even barking. If someone was in there, they'd be going crazy by now. Ma'am, I could get in a lot of trouble if anything happened and I didn't call anyone. It's company policy. How about this? I'll keep you on the phone while I go, okay? I'll switch to my cordless and everything. If anything happens at all, you can call the police. Miss Milgren. I will even grab my flashlight. Please. I just, I, I have a lot going on tomorrow, and I really just want to get back to sleep. I, uh, well, uh, just uh, let me at least check tonight's footage to make sure everything looks okay mm. first, all right? Yeah, yeah, of course. Go for it. Okay, let me see here. I'm trying to do this. Uh oh. Oh, um, okay, I'm getting an error. It's not letting me review it. Well, I, I can just head over really quick. Like, real quick. Well,. There's no motion alert in tonight's vlog, so... Okay, just please be quick and safe. 
Thank you. Seriously, I'm gonna go throw some clothes on and, um, you know, grab the cordless, okay? Yeah, all right. I'll look into the false alarms you mentioned and see if I can figure out what's going on with that. Okay, be right back. How corrupted. That's not good. Door alarm. Are we supposed to see something? File corrupted. Fuck me, man. Man, just trying to do his hey, job. On the cordless. Got my flashlight. Still there? Um, yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, heading outside now. Oh! I'm going right across to the kennel, so just hang on another sec. Okay. Now, I'm mean going right. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Up here. Okay. Look, look, right there. There's the motherfucker. Uh, heading outside now. I've been going right across to the kennel, so just hang on another sec. Okay. I'm just gonna go check on the dogs real quick on my way to the basement. But everything seems I'll fine. go to the basement. I'm I'm really not sure this is a good idea, Miss Mulgren. Look, listen, something was wrong with the recording that I'm seeing of your home. What do you, What do you mean wrong? Honestly, I'm I'm not sure exactly what I'm looking at here. It seems like the camera's glitched out or something. But the previous calls you've been getting, they they weren't false alarms. Yeah, again, I'm not sure what's going on here, but. Uh, something's been stalking around your property for a while now. I, I'm not sure how the previous people who called you didn't notice. Okay, something like what, an animal or? No, no, well, I, I don't know actually. I just, listen, I, I just think you should go back to your house, okay? Please. Okay, okay, yeah, you, you win. Let me just make sure that the dogs are okay and I'll head back over. They're just right here. <sighs> okay, thank you. I'm going to try to look over tonight's footage again, just in case it's decided to work. Okay. Hi, babies. Hi, Mama. It's... Um... What's wrong? Um... I don't... know. You okay, you okay, buddy? Charlotte? What's going on? The dogs aren't moving. They're all just standing here. Well, it's late, so maybe they're just tired or something. Uh, but let's just no, get you back. That's not it. They're just standing here, not moving. Like, at all. Like, not even their eyes. It's, it's like... Oh, my God. It's, it's like they're fucking dead, oh, but they're fuck. not. What the fuck? What? What? Miss Melgren, you need to get out of there and return to your house it, immediately. I'm sending your information to the police right now. What's going on? Get the hell out of the kennel, okay. now! Fuck. Fuck, I'm leaving! What was that? Are you okay? <laughs> Charlotte! Charlotte, are you okay? You just, you ripped my flashlight. Charlotte? You ripped my flashlight, it's gone. It's gone, it's gone. Something, something ripped it out of my hand. Oh, shit. I can't do anything. Please, please fucking help me, please. Please, something's in here. Okay, Charlotte, I've sent your information to the North Adams PD, okay? They responded that an officer will be there in three minutes. Uh, if you can find your way out. Charlotte, listen, you need to try your oh, best to be calm and listen to me, okay? Can you find your I way out? I realize I haven't been reacting. I've just been, I'm invested. You're in a killer. The door's fucking gone. The door's fucking gone. Charlotte, you're going to be okay. Just listen to me right now. Feel along the wall until you get to a door or a window, okay? Okay. Do it right now, nice and quick, all right? Please, 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 please
There's no. Oh my god, the door is actually gone. What the fuck? How'd the door disappear? Oh, look, a different year. This. No. If it's that dark, whatever is in there probably can't see you either, okay? So it's important that we stay very quiet until the police arrive. Very quiet. Okay. Okay, good. Okay. Stay right where you are. Keep your back against the wall. All right, the officer's just down the road right now. You're going to be okay. Now, now listen, I'm going to stop talking so we can be completely quiet. But no, I'm still here. I'm not going anywhere until you're safe. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I should have listened to you. It's, it's all okay. We're going to get you out of there. Now, no more talking. <laughs> Make a sound. I think my skin is moving. Ah, oh, fuck, you got caught. Test. This test yeah. is made up of five statements. Man, you I wanted her to live. Decide the corresponding number for each statement in your workbook. If you do not have your workbook, simply write one through five vertically on a piece of paper and write T or F beside each number. Okay. You will have five seconds to respond to each statement. Your test begins. True or false? I got it. Number pee. one. This video is something closer. Changing your brain. False. Excuse me. This video system leverages the principles of neuroplasticity, the brain's ability to reorganize itself by forming new neural connections. Through these specific audiovisual stimuli and cognitive exercises, it's influencing specific neural pathways in your brain, thereby physically altering the structure and function of your brain in response to this experience. I said it's Statement false. number two. Only a very small percentage of people will never betray their moral values, no matter the situation. Tell that to some content creators. <laughs> so false. Yeah. Under the right circumstances, such as intense peer pressure, survival situations, or psychological Oh, Doctor Disrespect was not peer pressure, man. Be made to betray even the strongest attachments to moral values. Nor was it the right circumstances. Number three, through your he did it, mind, and he's a fucking asshole decisions. for doing it. True. 
Okay, you can go fuck yourself. <laughs> a large portion of human decision making occurs at an unconscious level. The conscious mind rationalizes these decisions after the fact, making the person believe they made a deliberate choice. Choice is an illusion. Statement number four. We all have ten minutes left. Have immortal thoughts and desires. I gotta pee, man. I hope I don't piss our myself. The positive aspects of ourselves, so that we can be better people. But I must say, false. The darkest aspects of your I mind even are part to the of whole a larger thing. psychological entity that resides deep within your unconscious. This shadow entity cannot be reasoned with. It cannot be ignored. You cannot subdue it, lock it away, or eliminate it. Even attempting any such thing has the opposite effect, only making it stronger, darker, and more dangerous. Statement number five. Opening the door to your shadow psyche and embracing your darkest urges as a part of yourself is the only way to live a fulfilling life. False. It's closer, by the way. The thing is closer. Okay. Testing complete. There is no black door in this room. This is just a green screen. And a white door there, there, and a window. What you are about to experience has been carefully constructed in combination with previous exercises to create a connection point between your conscious and unconscious mind. This is our final section of this tape. Please watch and listen very closely. Do not look away or shield your eyes for any reason. Okay, Please so you're just gonna fucking jump scare me. Vulnerability are essential components to this process. After Activation I said I need to pee. Bridge will begin in five seconds. Now see, this is why you don't tell me ahead of time. Then I don't get scared. Ha <laughs> ha. Because now that there, I expected it. Holy shit, I actually need to really piss. Oh my god. We're almost done. Come on. Hi. You look strange. Did they take you over? Almost looks like Tony Khan. <laughs> Oh, no, it's not. Long pathway. Dearie me. I'm expecting it. I'm expecting it. I know it's coming. I am holding this piss in. Oh, dearie me.
One second. Let me just chat something. We're good. What am I? What am I on some sort of acid trip now? Still recording. Well, we're almost done. Please still be recording. Ouch. God, what is that face morphing into? What are you? Shoo! Go away! Tunnels and train tracks. Gotta love them. I am convinced this video has put me on an acid trip. Activation complete. It's clear. No sign of this mail room. Panels are empty too. Hope you said she had dogs here. Hmm. Okay, well. Seeing the basement. Was Adams police? Anybody down here? They're gonna find her mangled corpse. They're gonna find her mangled corpse. The fuck was that? Is that Lu the lieutenant from Mandela catalog? TF2, waking your subconscious, video cassette. Please allow your brain to rest for at least 12 hours before continuing this video system. Once you have rested and you are ready, enter the cassette labeled TF3, The Shadow, Communion and Assimilation. This is the end of this tape. That's it. Well fucking done. That was a damn good thing. Man, that was very, that got terrifying, man. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Anytime new parts come out about Greylock, we are going to react to them. So, 
So, yeah. Whenever the next part comes out, bet your ass I'm on it. And, yeah, I, I screamed a couple times. I know. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please leave a like, comment, subscribe for more. Tap the notification bell so you never miss an upload. Go subscribe to Greylock and watch the whole series without my mug in the little lower of the bottom left. I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya!